Hello, this is Seneca Harris coming to you with another video commentary brought to you by the Urban Wire Media Network, where we shine the light on issues impacting the urban community. Today, I want to talk about a tragic event. And with this being the first day of World Pride Month, I want to just talk about in, um, a story that took place last month. And it involved a 22-year-old transgender woman by the name of Malaysia Booker. She lived in Dallas, Texas, and she was brutally beaten back in April, but they found her dead last month, and she was shot to death. This has really, I mean, this has really been a story that has taken the nation by storm, and it's kind of brought forth the discussion of transgender rights and just, you know, just equal protection under the law, because we've been seeing a number of attacks and killings this year involving transgender women. And I think it's, it's a discussion that's really um, has made a, pub, a national outcry. And I think it's, it's a discussion that we, we need to look at. And with this being Pride Month, I think this is something that I feel that we should really discuss. Now I'm going to go to a clip that outlines the entire situation. And I'm going to also show you some highlights from the funeral and then I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. A transgender woman brutally attacked in Texas last month was found shot and killed over the weekend. Video from April's assault shows several men beating the woman in a Dallas parking lot. CBS This Morning investigative correspondent Anna Werner has been following this story for us. Anna, good morning. Look at that video. Good morning. Community and political leaders are mourning Malaysia Booker's death. Democratic presidential contenders Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren and Pete Buttigieg are calling for action, while Beto O'Rourke tweeted that transgender women of color across America deserve better. This time it was me, the next time it could be someone else. Close to you. Less than a month after speaking out about her attack, Malaysia Booker was found shot to death in a Dallas neighborhood. Upon arrival, officers found the complainant lying face down in the street, deceased from homicidal violence. Booker's previous assault in April was captured on cell phone video. The 23-year-old told authorities she was beaten following a minor traffic accident and said her attackers used homophobic slurs. Authorities charged Edward Thomas with aggravated assault. Although it was flagged as a hate crime, gender identity is not listed under Texas's hate crime statute. At this point, police have not connected that attack to Booker's murder. Her father hopes it wasn't a targeted killing. I pray that it wasn't, because I don't want to see nobody's child go through any of this, nobody's family. Everywhere we go, she was picked. She was picked on because she's transgender. Advocacy groups say attacks on transgender people in the U.S. are on the rise. Last year, the human rights campaign tracked at least 26 deaths due to fatal violence. The majority of victims were black transgender women. Experts say as shocking as the numbers are, the number of victims could be even higher. So often they will remain silent. Uh, and the data we have is based on the folks who have reported. We don't know about the folks who suffer in silence. The man accused of beating Booker last month is out of jail, but police say there's nothing to connect him to Booker's death. The human rights campaign says Booker is the fifth transgender person killed in 2019. But a po important point there at the end, we, there, there are a lot of these cases just don't get reported and abuse in these, yeah, these instances. Yeah, I guess I, they're talking about people being frightened into silence. Yeah. And I remember when we first saw the video of Malaysia Booker and that beating. It's very interesting. They don't, they don't know if there's a connection between yeah. that case and the guy who is now out. Right. That's it's, what they're saying. That's what police are saying. They really don't know there's any connection. Very upsetting story. Thank you, Anna. Uh, Dallas police have had their work cut out for them this month after yet another deadly shooting. We're now at 33 homicides for the month of May. Uh, one of those murders involved a transgender woman. Her, her violent attack was caught on camera, and then a month later, she was found dead. Yeah, very sad. Family and friends gathered to remember Malaysia Booker today. WFAA's Ariel Placencia was at Cathedral of Hope. If you look around, you can tell that Malaysia was love. She, she was beautiful. She was so beautiful. When Malaysia Booker's mother spoke during the funeral today, she had everybody's attention. If you asked me years ago, I wouldn't even think I'd be standing here doing none of this. Stephanie Houston, choosing to share intimate details with all 440 people 
inside the Cathedral of Hope. And he was born to me as Pierre. Pierre always been a character. He always been the upbeat, happy child. Malaysia was a split image of me, but it was so hard for me to see because to me he was my son. So my son's supposed to act different and my girl's supposed to act like me. That's what I thought. Booker's case remains unsolved. She's one of 33 homicide victims this month alone. Her death coming just weeks after a video of her beating went viral. Her back has been against the wall so many times. And that's one of the reasons I didn't want her to be who she was because it's already hard for a black man. Then a black gay man that want to be a transgender. See, I seen all the hate and all the stuff. All the stuff she went through was the things I wanted to prevent her from going through. Today's crowd included Dallas Mayor Mike Rawlings, dozens of speakers, friends, family, pastors, and singers. The Booker family and transgender community coming together to say one final goodbye. Uh, what she came here to do, she fulfilled. In Dallas, I'm Ariel Placencia. A veteran died. All right, I'm back with the rest of my commentary. A few things that I want to discuss about just the, the entire situation is this is a really a wake up call to those that are in the LGBT community. As we know that this year marks the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall riots and we still have a long way to go as far as LGBT rights are concerned especially with the issue of transgender rights. You know, we hear so much about gay rights and about how a lot of people are speaking up for the gay, gay rights, but so many times we forget about transgender rights. And I'm really glad that people are now starting to look at these situations seriously. And I think we as a community, we really need to support one another. Because within the LGBT community, there's, there's a lot of people that, you know, there's a lot of discrimination. There's a lot of uh, hatred and bigotry towards different sectors within the gay community. And a lot of people kind of have the whole transgender thing misunderstood. Even a lot of gay men, it's, it's just like this little rift between the two communities within within the LGBT community. And I feel that in order for us to be a powerhouse movement, we have to all come together and we all have to love one another and accept one another because we're not going to be powerful if we're divided. And I know how I hear so many times people make fun of transgender women and, and this, that, and the other. And it's, it's a lot of gay people that do it, you know, but I feel that you know, it's, it's them today that's being discriminated, discriminated against, but it could be you tomorrow. So, you know, and it, this goes for even just the heterosexual community as well. You know, uh, you, you really gotta have some compassion towards people. It's not even about a morality issue because everybody has their views on different things. But this is more of a humanity issue. And the way this this young lady was killed, this young transgender lady was killed, it's just unacceptable that this is still going on in this country in 2019. And I think the LGBT community, we have to start holding these politicians feet to the fire. And especially you dealing with people like Trump that only want to come out and support the gay community because there's some type of benefit behind it. And that's why I have a problem with what the pride parades or pride celebrations have become these days because now it's just the big corporate event. Like it's a cash, it's a cash grab for these corporations because years ago they would not even want to be associated with the gay community, but now they see that it's profitable. They want to dip their hand in the cookie jar and see what they can get. So I kind of feel that we, we as a community, we need to start Definitely, for one, we need to start accepting and coming together, uh, each other and coming together. And two, we need to uh, demand more out of our politicians. You know, with, with the primaries coming up and everything, I feel that we need to start looking into 
these politicians' background and just start questioning their viewpoints on different issues. And this just this isn't even just the LGBT community type of thing or issue. This is just in general, you know, especially black people. We we have to start looking at that as well. Uh, we have to start looking in these backgrounds of these politicians and seeing their viewpoints on different issues that impact our community specifically. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, everybody wants to, you know, look down on people because, oh, you're just looking out for your community. But you have to look out for your community because if you don't look out for your community, nobody else will. Especially when you see minority communities such as the African-American community and the LGBT community, you have to look out for your special interests or your best interests because nobody else is going to look out for you. So you have to speak up and demand more. But I just want to send out condolences to this family. They had the funeral on May 28th. And from what I saw, it was just a beautiful service. They had the service at the Cathedral of Hope in Dallas, Texas. That's one of the biggest LGBT um, congregations in the world. And it was just so much love at that service. You know, it, a lot of people had so much positive to say about Malaysia. And I just, I just wish her family the best as they deal with this, you know, this, this tragedy. Is this just, this, this is a senseless murder. And I hope they find the person who is responsible. Now, they did find the guy that was responsible for the beating in April, the attack in April. But I, I from what I'm saying, that they are unable to connect him to the murder that took place in May. But I'm just going to conclude this video by saying we as a community, we have to come together. This is the 50th year. Um, where um, Stone of Stonewall, and we really have to start speaking out. Um, and, and, and this is going to be the platform I'm going to use. You know, we're going to talk about black issues, but we're going to talk about LGBTQ community too, because the black community is encompassed into the LGBT community as well. And I kind of feel within the black gay community and trans community there is racism like i mentioned earlier in this commentary that's a whole nother conversation I'm, I'm wanting to have and this is why i'm going to be starting up the t which is going to be a podcast that we're going to be trying to launch hopefully this month and we're going to talk about issues like that and i know it's going to make some of you guys uncomfortable but we have to look at this thing from a realistic point of view until next time, check us out. We're on Spotify now, our podcast, the Urban Wire Podcast. Go check us out there. We're also on Stitcher, iTunes. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on a multiple array of uh, platforms. We're also on Blog Talk Radio. I don't want to forget that. Please check us out and subscribe here on YouTube. And pretty soon we're going to have a cash app link for people who want to support what we're doing. And we're going to have some more... Uh, content coming up this month so check us out subscribe and we'll catch you next time